Merry Christmas. I'm Albert Bird, aka Pastor Albert. Hi, my name is Samuel Steele. Hey everyone, Joshua Slocum, student pastor here at Holiday Hill. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Stick. Hi, I'm Bree. Hi, my name is Scotty. Hi, I'm Stacy. Hi, my name is Trish. Hi, my name is Maria. Hi, my name is Grayson. Hi, I'm Beth Martelli. Hi, my name is Linda Wallace. Hi, my name is Steven. Hi, I'm Mackenzie. I'm Bella. I'm Abby. Hi, this is my friend Kim. And this is my friend Esther. Die Hard, there's no other acceptable answer. Probably Christmas Vacation. It's a really funny movie. Well, that's easy because I'm the older generation and that's being Crosby and White Christmas. Probably my favorite Christmas movie are the Hallmark Christmas movies. Um, so not just one, but all of them. Probably Elf. Um, that's the only one I consistently watch. The other ones make me want to vomit. Elf. Every time it's on, I have to watch it, so I can probably quote the whole entire thing. Rudolph and The Grinch. Oh, good ones. My favorite Christmas movie is The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Hmm, that's a tough one. I like Home Alone. That one is really, really good. But I really like The Grinch, the classic one, um, because I can teach similes and metaphors to third graders with it. So, a reason to watch it at school. <laughs> My favorite Christmas movie is um, A Christmas Story. Uh, but I also really... Shoot your eye out. That's true. Don't get a Red Ryder BB gun. Maybe Home Alone. Uh, probably Charlie Brown Christmas. Charlie Brown Christmas is definitely up there. Although in recent years, one that I've grown to love is the one entitled The Man Who Invented Christmas. That's easy. I just watched it last night. The name of it is Silent Night. And it's about Americans and Germans that came together in a truce one uh, Christmas at the end of the war with Germany. Uh, I like Polar Express. Uh, I like The Grinch. I like Elf. I like Do You Hear What I Hear. I like that one. Um, I like Oh Holy Night. Those are probably my favorites. Probably Oh Holy Night. It's Oh Holy Night. I love that song. I love Perry Como when he sings it. Oh Holy Night. This one has sentimental value for me. It's actually the Amy Grant Christmas album from like the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, had a lot of synthesizer stuff in there. Uh, had Emmanuel in it and yeah. Uh, a lot of sentimental value, a lot of nostalgia factor in there. Some of my earliest childhood memories involve my mom baking Christmas cookies to that album. So the whole album is pretty, pretty much awesome to me. All I Want for Christmas is You by Mariah Carey. Um, I like Hallelujah but by Pentatonix. Last Christmas by Wham. I like uh, Carol of the Bells by Pentatonix. Well, when I was a kid, it was Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, um, but now that I'm older, probably Carol of the Bells. It's, um, you're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. <laughs> I'm personally not big on Christmas music. It's just never been my thing. That being said, um, Trans-Siberian Orchestra has always been solid, and if I had to pick a favorite, it'd be a Mad Russian's Christmas. I really don't have a favorite one. Um, honestly, I don't really listen to Christmas music that much. It's just never really been my thing. All of them? Most all of them, anyway. Um, but I will say I think one of my most favorites is Mary Did You Know by Mark Lowry and Vokdov, also known as Voices of Liberty if you go to Disney. Um, fantastic version, highly recommend it. What was the song again? Mary Did You Know. Oh, okay, I got <laughs> caught up in the other part. That is a beautiful song. I'm gonna go with you're gonna like this one, Esther. Elvis, Blue Christmas. It's the best Blue Christmas version. Yeah. Ever. You're singing in your head right now, aren't you? Totally am. Yeah. All right. Probably the Little Drummer Boy, especially the one with uh, King and Country. This is the one I brought today. It is um, Darth Vader and Princess Leia. Nowadays, it has even more sentimental value for me because it's basically a father dealing with a sassy daughter. I feel that. This little ornament right here uh, with my initial on it, and the reason it's favored is for two reasons. I like it because it's personal with the an E, and secondly, it was given to me by a very dear friend. 
Well, I don't know if I have a particular favorite. I have lots that I like. So I brought one. Um, it is my 1996 Snow White Christmas ornament that I got when I was however I old, however old I was in 96, 11. Um, and it's my Eleven. favorite. You're well, one of my favorites. <laughs> um, Snow White is my favorite princess, so anything to do with Snow White. Unless it's sushi. You don't like Snow White sushi. I don't like sushi at all, so it wouldn't matter. <laughs> so my favorite Christmas ornament, well, um, all my Christmas stuff is still literally packed up in, in the box. So um, I looked around the house for anything Christmas, and this guy right here is actually not packed up. That shows you how much I do like this. It's not an ornament, but it's... It ornates my house. But it's it lights up. It's beautiful. The arms are removable. My friend gave it to me. I think he's really, he's very festive. And How fun. he sits on my shelf all winter. So there you have it. Not an ornament. So I got a little spider man here. Um, I don't actually put it on the tree. It stays in my room year round. And it's like on my chain for my fan. But. I like it the most because I was in Frankenmuth, Michigan, which is basically like the Christmas capital of the world. They have the biggest Christmas store in America and it's open year round. Um, but I was there with my grandpa, who I don't get to see too often, and I was like eyeing the ornament. I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like, I love Spider Man. And he bought it and then he gave it to me. So that's like my special one. I just keep it in my room year round. This is more representative. It, I got this this year. It's a gator ornament. But the reason that it represents, I have a friend that since 2007 has given me, her and her family, a uh, gator Christmas ornament. And as a result of that, I now have a tree in my office sitting room because there's so many ornaments. And so uh, it's just been a blessing every year to get them. And this is my, and I really like the blimp this year. It's pretty awesome. So my favorite Christmas ornaments are all of the homemade Christmas ornaments that my children gave me over the years, which is kind of funny because those are the ornaments that they always hated the most, but I love them the most. Probably this little tree I have right here. It's a wooden Christmas tree I built when I was about six. Every Saturday we would go, uh, me and my mom would go to Lowe's and we would build the new thing they had every single week. Uh, then we would go get Chick-fil-A afterwards. That's just something really sentimental that I remember my mom with. Well, my favorite Christmas ornaments, I actually have three. They are the shield, a wrestling team. And so we went to professional wrestling for a while. And these are my favorite guys. And they're on a team called the shield. So that's my favorite ornament. Reminds me of family stuff. My favorite Christmas ornament is this one because it has Grayson's footprint from uh, her first Christmas and a picture of our family. So that is one I think is very special. And what's yours? Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse? Okay. This is kind of a funny story, and I really wish I would have brought it. But uh, when we were, when Mark and I first got married, um, that. That Christmas, it, it was turning um, 2000, you know, the next year. And so uh, my, my mother-in-law had bought this really fancy Radco ornament um, for 2020, or excuse me, for 2000. And, um, and we were hanging it up on our very first Christmas tree and I was teasing Mark that I was gonna drop it. And I literally dropped it and it shattered everywhere. And he was really mad, um, but we made it through. And then his mother-in-law bought us another one a couple years later. But. So, so that's always funny. I always tease him like I'm going to drop it again. I brought these with me today. Uh, decorated my tree. My tree is already decorated, but I have way more ornaments than I have room on the tree. That wasn't the case here. This is 1986. Uh, we didn't have much. We had a small apartment with little or no furniture. We had no Christmas tree, no decor, anything. And at the time, we had a little mail-in thing that we could get these free ornaments. 1986, we got these ornaments, and I have kept them and put them on the tree ever since. They're dated 1986, and it's just another reminder of what the Lord has done in our life and how far He's brought us. My favorite Christmas ornament are these little sleighs that my, I think, my grandmother made and it has snowmen on it and then it says my 
sister and I's name on them. They're really cute. I like this little one that you plug into the uh, Christmas tree and it's a little stocking and then Santa moves in and out of the um, stocking and it's just really cute and I've grown up with it on the tree. It was always like my favorite part of it. Okay, mine is these little gold <coughs> jingle bells. I don't really have a favorite Christmas ornament, but we had a, um, or we still have it. It's a little tree that you, or a little tree, a little train you set up around the tree and it blows out smoke and that was just always my favorite thing to play with. This one. I stole it from Josh. We, well, actually the decorating for us starts early in November and we have our lights on by uh, Thanksgiving weekend. For Christmas, uh, my husband's son and his family are the only relatives that live here. And uh, they come over for dinner Christmas Eve and we go over to their house to exchange gifts with them and the grandchildren on Christmas Day. For my family, we do three of them. On Christmas Eve, we go see my grandmother on my mother's side of the family and spend the evening with her. Christmas morning, we spend in our house and it's just me, my mom, my dad, and my sister. And then typically it's either Christmas afternoon or the day after Christmas, we go see my grandmother on my father's side. I married into a large family. And because of this, they start on Christmas Eve and they end the day after Christmas on the 26th. Uh, so we go to my wife's family on Christmas Eve that evening. Uh, we spend two Christmas with my family, my parents, that morning. We then go back to Esther's family that afternoon and evening. And then we spend Christmas, post-Christmas, the 26th, with Esther's parents uh, the day after and open presents with them. It's a large holiday. December 24th, December 25th, December 26th. That might be about it, but for me, I start November 1st and I go through the end of January, at least. It's great. Um, yeah, I like that. I think, uh, and we start around December 1st in the classroom. It's too late. Is that too late? It's too late. <laughs> so usually on Christmas Eve, we get together as a family. We come to church, watch the service, go back to my house, eat dinner. Um, and then on Christmas morning, usually my husband, myself, and the kids, they, we all get together, open presents, and then later that day we go to usually a family member's house to eat together. We start Christmas Eve at my grandparents' house, and then Christmas morning we open up gifts, and then we spend the rest of the day just going around to different family members' houses. So we do Christmas on Christmas Eve. Well, part of ours takes place on Christmas Eve. We always do the church service together, and that's a special time. And then when do we open presents? Um, do we do? Uh, Christmas Eve's night. Well, um, because I'm always here for Christmas Eve, um, my parents usually come up here, and we celebrate here um, after service, and then go back to my house. And um, either I make dinner, or my mom helps me make dinner. On Christmas Eve, we open our presents from our family and then on Christmas Day we open our presents from Santa because he came from the North Pole. Um, for me it depends on like what's happening because sometimes my dad will work Christmas Eve or Christmas, it's never both. So sometimes we'll open them Christmas Eve and then sometimes we'll open them Christmas morning. It all depends though. We open them on Christmas morning. It's not uncommon that we have a little bit of a family get together on Christmas Eve at our house after our Christmas Eve services here at church. And then Christmas morning, um, the family and my in-laws, we get together and, and enjoy time and then we have dinner later that day. Sometimes earlier in December, we'll get together with my mom and my sisters and their families. Uh, on Christmas day with my family. Just on Christmas. Like every other day, it's like we pretend the Christmas decorations aren't there. Christmas is not happening until Christmas day. We don't open presents before. We don't do anything before. I think the only thing we do before is like Christmas Eve, we'll drive around and look at lights, but that's it. Probably Christmas day. Um, we usually cook a big breakfast. Well, uh, the main thing that comes to me is that um, I used to do this until 
the kids got older, my grandchildren, uh, on Christmas, before Christmas dinner, I would always read the story of the birth of Jesus from the Bible. Not too many, other than uh, I know that before we can go into our presence, we sing Happy Birthday to Jesus. That's Amy drives that, and we do that, and that's pretty awesome. Um, other than that, that's, that's kind of it. So every year we read the best little Christmas pageant ever. And every year I can't make it through without crying. One of the big ones is on Christmas Day at, with my mom and dad, my mom would make stuffed fresh toast with bacon. And um, the stuffed fresh toast has like an orange marmalade sauce. And that's really, really good. And that's probably one of the big Christmas traditions with my family. Also in recent years, my mom will bake Christmas cookies with the kids leading into Christmas. And that's really fun too. I don't know that we have any real fun or unique ones, you know? It's just get up in the morning, open presents, chit chat for a little while, have breakfast. But pretty much everyone does that. Every year we'd go to my great grandma's house and me and my parents and my aunt and uh, my cousins would all race to our other grandma's house, see who could get there faster. On Christmas Eve, um, go over to my grandmother's house where we have approximately 40 or so people in a one bathroom house. Um, so yeah, that's fun. But we all exchange gifts with everybody and um, then we go home and then for lunch, we go back to my grandmother's house after I go to my in-laws. That sounds nice. So, and, then I, and then I celebrate Christmas with my parents on the 26th, so, yeah. Except for the 40 people. Mm -hmm. All right, we eat lots of good food, though. Mm -hmm. Yes, good food. All right, um, hmm. Well, we do, my family, we like draw names out of a hat on Thanksgiving. But if we forget to do it, then my mom just draws names out of the hat <laughs> and then she just texts and she, everybody. She assigns them. And then it's not very secret anymore. But um, so we do that and then on uh, Christmas we exchange a gift. And if you're not there, um, you like sometimes, yeah, you, we give your gift to someone <laughs> else that forgot to bring a gift. So it usually works out. <laughs> That's fun. Yes. Christmas Eve, we'll go around and look at Christmas lights after we get hot chocolate at Starbucks. Going and looking at lights in the back of my dad's truck has been something we've been doing for a while. Uh, we'd always make hot chocolate and put it in a thermos and just go around and look at lights. Uh, my favorite house to go look at lights at are, is obviously Ray Wallace's. He always puts on a good show. Mainly just the decorating. My house is fully decorated inside. That takes a while. I sit back and enjoy that. My husband did try to make a gingerbread house. He was convinced it was easy and it fell apart. So we don't have any of those usual. Well, my parents like to go last minute Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. So me and my sister go up to the top of this hill in my great grandparents' neighborhood and we take like scooters or skateboards or bicycles and then we go all the way down the hill and sometimes I fall off. Um, my Sorry. family, we always go to Starbucks and get some sort of drink and then we all pile back into the van and we go to Secret Cove and look at all the Christmas lights there and then when we drive back to our neighborhood, we look in our neighborhood too. We usually watch a movie on Christmas Eve. Play games. We do play games. We also go to Hallmark. And what do we do at Hallmark? Get ornaments. Ornaments for our tree, that's right. Probably um, always living here at the church and getting ready for Christmas Eve because that's my life, that's my job. So uh, the tradition would be getting ready for church or getting ready for a program that we have or for instance this year getting ready for the Christmas walk. My family doesn't have any, uh, they don't get to do away with that. They have to help. They're part of the fun. Me. Look at me. I'm the Santa Claus. <laughs> well, Christmas is special, really is the family time. So for me, it the, the most special part would be probably Christmas morning when it's me, my husband, and when the two kids were young. Um, we've still been getting together for Christmas morning, but that's probably the most special part is just the family, they make it special. I'd say Amy, the way she decorates the house and, and does things and just really gets a lot of joy out of it. There are two halves to this question. Growing up, the answer was my mom. Mom did a lot of baking, did a lot of cooking, 
did a lot of decorating for Christmas. She made it a big deal. As I've gotten older now that I have a family of my own, I would say it's my wife. Uh, my wife Esther exemplifies the term Christmas cheer. She has a geeky joy and happiness for Christmas that no one else I've ever seen has, especially for someone her age. And it's awesome and it's heartwarming and it is contagious. Family and friends. Probably my mom. Um, and that, you know, that probably actually goes back to this uh, Christmas tradition. My mother can play the piano and she can sing. And so we always she would always play the piano and sing um, hymns, Christmas hymns, and we'd sit around and, and do them. And I would sit at the piano and doodle with her. And um, so probably my mom, she made it special. Probably Bella and Briley, because they're, they're the younger ones. They're the ones who, mostly Briley. <laughs> she's gonna be the most excited about it. So even though we do all the work, Briley's the one who's gonna be the most excited about it and like happy about what's going on. So she makes it special. A lot of people come to mind for this question, but the three most prominent ones is probably my, is probably my mom, my grandma, and my uncle Jimmy. He's always really nice and lively and fun during Christmas. To me, the person who makes Christmas special is Jesus. Well, of course Jesus makes Christmas special because without him, we wouldn't have the holiday. God made Christmas special. God in our life has done so much for us. We have come so far. We could not have done that without him. Without him, our life was going down. And since he's been in our life, we just love Christmas and love getting ready for it and love honoring him. Jesus. Jesus? Jesus? Yeah, Jesus makes Christmas special. Actually, he made Christmas. Yes, he did. So when my parents got divorced, um, my mom didn't have much money for me. And um, two of her friends, they, uh, they're awesome people. They um, went and bought a bunch of Christmas presents for me and um, made her say that they were from Santa. So that, I mean, they didn't want the credit. They just wanted me to have a good Christmas. And um, ever since then, they have been my heroes. They have made my life better. All during December, I read the Christmas story and I usually look up a devotion that has to do with Christmas. And then on Christmas Day, we read the story and we have lots of nativity scenes all over the house. You make Jesus the focus. It shouldn't be about shopping and buying and gifts. It should and be Santa. about and Santa, Coca-Cola, Santa. Santa. It should be about um, being together with family and your loved ones and spending time together and remembering um, Jesus, remembering our God's greatest gift to us. That's better than any gift, don't you think? I fully agree. I have a tradition from my childhood and going forward all my life that, that we understand that the reason that we celebrate Christmas is because of Jesus' birth and it gets out of hand a lot of, with a lot of people, but I still have that. It's always in the back of my mind around Christmas time. Try to keep the focus where it needs to be reading scripture daily. When the kids were little, we used to make birthday cakes for Jesus. We would always do um, that. But uh, recently, you know, we would um, read the Advent, Advent readings and um, that was, that's how we make Jesus the reason for the season. Just knowing that, you know, gifts and presents are fun and all, but knowing that it's more of a serious time of God coming into this world and giving all the people hope. It's what I tell everybody. I read my Bible. I pray. I'm reminded everything I do with reminders like this. I have little signs around my house reminding me to pray. Bible verses that I, I look at to remember. It's just so evident in my life. I don't have any problem with Jesus being the reason for the season. Love, honestly. You know, this time of year is filled with more sadness than any other time of year because people that are alone during the holidays are always very sad. 
So how do you make Jesus for the reason for the season? Reach out to them and let them know that you care for them. You spread love, peace, and positivity through the world. Positivity. <laughs> positivity. <laughs> One of the things we'll do as a family is, before we open presents on Christmas Day, we will actually read the Christmas story. I don't know. I always love Jesus. It's always his season. I don't know. I don't do anything specifically different. I think year round, I'm always thinking about, I mean, what Jesus has done for me and like the grace that he's given me. So around Christmas time, I guess it's even more prominent. Well, I enjoy like for the church activities, for sure, we, you know, working in the preschool, we always try to focus on Jesus is the reason for the season. Because, you know, when we look at um, Easter and the resurrection, which should bring probably the most joy, it tends to be a little more of a somber time because of the death and crucifixion. But Christmas, I think, I mean, it's hard to be around a baby and not have joy. The Sunday school answer would be Jesus, because the birth of Jesus, you know, and all the wonderful things that followed that. But the reality of it is, people just like getting stuff. And this time of year, they get free stuff. I think it's because of what Christmas honestly represents. And I think for me anyway, it represents a new beginning. It represents something new. It represents a change of pace. It represents the reset button. And how can that not bring joy? Because we know with Jesus' birth that we have eternal life if we believe in Him. And uh, that we don't have to worry about, uh, I mean, we, we can have all kinds of weird situations going on, but we can still have joy in our heart because we know that Jesus is our Lord and Savior. There's, there's a spirit of giving, and when you're giving to somebody and you're giving somebody something, like no matter what that context is, it's usually going to make you feel good. Christmas and joy are definitely connected. It's probably the most special time of the year. I mean, that sounds, sound, cor, that sounds corny, but it really is true. I think that's when everybody's getting together with their family, their friends, their loved ones. Um, we enjoy being together. We eat. We laugh. We have fun. We have a presence, and it's just, it's just a joyous occasion. I think because people love gifts, and who doesn't? It makes you happy. Well, because uh, Jesus is the joy of the world. Without Him, we have no joy. So, since it's about His birth, and He is joy, that's why I feel like they're connected. You know, I think in the secular world, getting presents and giving presents are part of that joy. Um, but I think just something about the season, and the decorations, and the lights and um, just being something different helps us to um, get out of our regular uh, mundane uh, story. And, and for me, it's always a chance, because I'm a public school teacher, it's a chance for me to say what Christmas is like for Christians. And I, I don't say that personally I am a Christian because um, I could get in trouble for something like that, but I always talk about who Jesus is and um, what that means to be a Christian around Christmas and um, do joy to the world. That's how I sneak that in. It was the birth of our Savior. It was a wonderful time, but it was a tragic time. You know, he brought the word and people slowly flocked to him. And here it is, 2020, and we're still talking about Jesus. We are still worshiping. We are doing the many things, there is just no way anybody could look at this and not know that the joy is with God. It's Jesus' birth. It's, um, he always said he was, you know, a light and a joy. So it makes sense that the ultimate bringer of joy would be born on Christmas. Because you have to be happy and joyful during Christmas to make other people happy and joyful so they're in a good mood. Um, why do you put it as <laughs> I think that Christmas and joy are connected because like the whole idea of Christmas is like you're spending time with your family and your friends and stuff and that the Lord like was born and stuff. So I think that's how Christmas and joy are connected. And stuff. <laughs> I love how Bella talked about Jesus and I didn't. Um, <coughs> I don't know if there's something that I'm going to do. Is he done? Okay. Um, it's, I think Christmas and joy are connected because you're spending time with your family and just enjoying everything. So, yeah. I think Christmas and joy are connected in that 
people tend to get very happy around Christmas time. They're excited to spend time with their family, to get together and give gifts and to get gifts. Um, I think maybe that's how they're connected. And you, Jesus. And Jesus, definitely. And Jesus. Because when I think of Christmas, I think Jesus. So, I mean, for me as a mom, as moms, we always go overboard making sure everything's perfect for our kids, for our family. Um, for me, it was just always not overdoing it, um, having time for myself to set aside to watch those Hallmark movies or just to, you know, have a cup of coffee in the morning. Um, that's how I maintain my joy, just making sure I don't drive myself crazy and exhausted, but to just take a step back and just enjoy being with my family and with the loved ones. You know, I think I'm a pretty calm person most of the time until Christmas comes and then I get pretty ramped up. So I have to remember why I'm doing this. Why am I doing all these crazy things um, at Christmas when all of our schedules are crazy? And I maintain that by saying, if someone comes, if someone sees something that we're doing that has never heard of Jesus or Jesus' love, that's, that's worth it, you know? The, heart attacks that I have and the anxiety that I get around these things. If, if somebody comes and um, gets it, then that's my joy. I guess first you got to start by realizing that joy is not the same thing as happiness. Nope. Um, joy is not found in monetary or earthly possessions. It's actually found through Christ, I believe. Um, and so even in, in poor circumstances, you can still be joyful. And then, how do you maintain that? Hmm. Like friendships with fellow Christians. Friendships. Yeah. With fellow Christians. Friendships. Like Kim. Like Esther. My husband and I are a good balance. If one of us isn't up, the other one seems to be and pulls us out. We, we just, after all these years, we just embrace each other and we constantly say I love you and thank you and please to each other. Wonderful marriage and it, it helps maintain my joy because he's going to pull me out whatever I get down on. But it's hard to, it's hard uh, not to be joyful because uh, of Christ in my life. Spending time with family. Spending time with your family. Trying to keep focus. What's it really about? What is Christmas about? And it's about Jesus, it's about loving people. Um, and try not to get drugged down by, by negative people, people that just want to drag you down. And, don't, and, and that's not only individuals, but that's the world. And so just trying to keep your perspective on what really matters most. Surrounding myself with people whose company I enjoy. That's probably one of the big ones of how to maintain joy. I maintain my joy by keeping people around me that make me happy and want to better me. Being around friends, um, being around family. I maintain my joy by hanging out with my friends and family, like everyone at the church and stuff. First I try to think on positive things, I try not to complain, and I just try to be thankful for everything I have. Understanding that, that God is in control, that He made a way for us to have eternal life, and that I have peace for that. So I, um, I love Christmas because I love remembering and celebrating that Jesus was born at Christmas.